Kimple in here, and whether you live with an unrepentant, sexually addicted spouse um, who doesn't want to acknowledge their sin, or your spouse has come clean about adultery and is making strides to change, you can turn your fear to your advantage so you can heal. Okay, so today we're going to talk about how to thwart that fe that fear that just really thwarts our own healing, okay? So before we dive in, I wanna introduce myself for those of you if this is the first time that you're coming. So um, my name is Kim Pullen and I started Hope for Spouses because I had been through a very traumatic situation where my husband and I were separated for four years due to his serial adultery. Uh, we were, he was living with another woman for two and a half years. I found out about, um, a lot of his adultery and so I we separated he moved in with her he was with her for two and a half years they broke up and then he started his very slow journey back it took him about 18 months meanwhile during that four-year period I worked on myself and I got my heart right with God I realized I had, um, really committed idolatry of my husband and had to really deal with a lot of codependency in my life We've been back together for over three years now. We have an incredible marriage. Uh, I thank God for it every day and for what we've gone through. But I'm here now because I want to give other women hope to change. Even if your spouse chooses not to, you can still have an amazing life for what God designed for you uh, regardless. And you're not going to let fear stop you. Because what happened with me is fear, especially after my husband and I separated, fear became a constant companion for me. I mean, it drove my every thought and action. It paralyzed me. I felt like I was a deer in perpetual headlights. And, you know, everything from fear of abandonment, fear of rejection, fear of being alone. I've been married for 19 years. I hadn't slept alone in my bed for 19 years. Um, fear of being inadequate, of being defective. Uh, fear of the unknown, fear of making the wrong choice, fear of more pain, fear of damaging my children and what their future relationships were going to be like, fear of being homeless because I was a stay-home mom at the time, uh, fear of being lied to again if I let him back in. So how do we get past those fears? How do you find your way around these obstacles that seem to shadow your every move. It's like you move this way and your fear moves right in front of you and you move this way and your fear moves right in front of you. So how do you turn your advantage to find hope and healing regardless of the choices that your spouse makes? So that's what we're going to talk about today. Now, if you're here today, go ahead and uh, sign in. I am going to be using the comment box also to put some scriptures that I'm going to share with you guys and some cool, um, if I can put some pictures and I'll probably put some graphics in uh, when it goes into the recording and you guys can come back and look at the graphics as well. So anyway, uh, so fear. So the first thing we have to do is we have to face some facts, okay? Fear is a liar. I love that song that has come out recently, that fear is a liar. If you haven't heard it, go to YouTube, type in fear is a liar. Awesome song because it's so true. Fear is a liar. Satan uses fear to keep us from moving forward, okay? big thing like so I talked about those lists of fears okay the first one is afraid of being alone afraid of being abandoned afraid of being rejected but you know what the truth is we're never alone we're never abandoned we're never rejected okay in Deuteronomy 31 I'm gonna put this down here see if I can put it in the comment box so you guys can see this there we go okay so in Deuteronomy 31 it says be strong and courageous do not be afraid or terrified because of them for the Lord your God is with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Okay? If you are following God with all of your heart, if you're, you're, you're reading your Bible, you're pouring yourself into your relationship with Jesus, you know what? God's never going to abandon you. He's never going to leave you. He's always there. Your spouse may make other choices, but God is your first husband, and he will never abandon you. I mean, you need to get to a point in your relationship with God. I had to get to that point where... I realized I didn't need my spouse to really be happy and joyful and, and, and have a full life. It would have, I would prefer for him to be there, but I didn't need him. And Satan and my fear had lied to me and made me think that I did. And it took me a long time to get to that point where I really was able to recognize that, even say that to my husband, because I wanted him to really see that it wasn't about it wasn't between him choosing me or this other woman. It was about him choosing God. 
And I had made that choice to choose God. Is it harder to raise children alone? Absolutely. I have nothing but the most incredible respect for single moms because it is really, really hard to be the mom and the dad, especially when your spouse is unrepentant and they're doing things that, that seem to tie your hands when it comes to your children. But I tell you what, it's easier raising your kids alone than it is with a spouse that's emotionally abusing you or your kids through their lack of repentance. Okay, And you know what? The most amazing thing is God is so gentle and so patient with us when we have children. Okay, um, He's going to let me do any more scriptures here. Oh, there we go. Okay, there's that first scripture that I read. Okay, here's the second one. Okay, so it is, this is, this was a treasure that I found when I was really thinking about my kids. It says, he tends his flocks, talking about Jesus as the shepherd. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. That's us. Jesus is not pushing us forward like he does, the, you know, the, the big, strong male sheep. Okay, it says the ones who have young, he gently leads us. Because he understands we're taking care of the little ones. That's the amazing shepherd that Jesus is in our life. Okay? So we're never going to be abandoned. We're never going to be alone. Jesus is always right there. Okay, second thing. We think that we're going to, we can somehow get away from pain. But the truth is, fact. Okay, pain, you're going to be in pain one way or the other. Okay? And we can choose how we're going to deal with pain. We can get paralyzed by pain. Or we can choose to push through it. Okay. I mean, honestly, suffering sucks. Okay. It stinks. It's horrible. Okay. Nobody likes it. All right. But re when you really think about it, God didn't just expose your spouse's sin because he knew it was there. He didn't just expose your spouse's sin for his sake so that he can heal, so that he can change, so that he can have the relationship with God that he needs to. He did it for your sake as well, because we all have areas of our character that we need to change and grow. And so God exposed this. He's now exposing your character issues because he doesn't want you to be robbed of your own salvation. Okay? Now there in, in, in the first century, there was a lot of issue with like why bad things would happen to people. And Jesus had a response to that. So it says in Luke uh, chapter 13, verses 1 through 5, because all the people were saying, um, you know, there was a guy who was born blind, and it was like, well, uh, was he born blind because something bad happened? Because sometimes we can start thinking bad things happen because, um, uh, like, we're bad, and, you know, we're going to be condemned by God. And, and But Jesus said, do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered this way? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you too will all perish. Or those 18 who died when the Tower of Siloam fell on them. Do you think they were more guilty than all the others in Jerusalem? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you too will all perish. See, all of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So we have no responsibility for what our spouse chooses to do. But we have full responsibility for what we choose to do with our life and our changing. And God's word helps expose us so that we can deal with this fear because the fear can become an idol. We can, we can idolize this and then it freezes us from doing anything. So we need to deal with ourselves. Okay, number three. Okay, one of the biggest fears that I had was making a mistake, was, was, was making the wrong choice, was making the wrong decision. And I've seen some of the women on, especially on the Facebook group, this is one of the biggest fears that we have when it comes down really to setting boundaries with a spouse who's unrepentant. So we're afraid of making a mistake. We're afraid of doing something wrong, okay? But you know what? You're gonna make mistakes. I made dozens of them. I made so many mistakes. But you know what? That's how we learn. And you know, Jesus's blood covers us when we make mistakes and, and his grace is sufficient for when we're trying. We're just trying to move forward. We're trying to do the best that we can, okay? We can also be afraid of the unknown okay that then that follows that whole suit with making mistakes so if our spouse is abusive if they're gaslighting us if they're manipulative you know this is what we become familiar with this is the known do you know what we need to be out of that we don't need to be in the middle of that we don't understand the the whole idea behind what our, our spouse abusing us that is not a healthy known situation for for us to be in okay we want to be able to be 
out of that situation, that God can totally transform where we're at, what we're doing, in spite of our mistakes. Romans 8.28, okay, or I'm sorry, Romans 8.28 yeah, 8, says uh, that God works all things for good, even our mistakes. God turns them and makes them for good. I mean, look where I'm at right now. I'm sitting here talking to people on Facebook, you know, 700 people in this Facebook group because God turned something horrible in my life into something good. And so I'm able to help give hope to other people. So God can change any situation. We just have to let him. We can also, we need to look at our life, not as this dark tunnel that we're going down, but, but there's an adventure that God has in store for us. And I know you can't see that right now, but where I'm at, I'm at the other end of the tunnel. And I can tell you, it is an adventure. It's scary. It's um, sometimes terrifying. Sometimes it's, you get this lull, but you know what? God wants to pull you through that and bring you to a place that is so amazing away from your fear. Okay, number four. We have to uh, stop thinking that our spouse is keeping us from moving forward. Okay, I'm going to say that again because that's a big one. We can sometimes think that our spouse uh, is keeping us from moving forward. So we're afraid because, well, what if my spouse changes? What if this happens? What if, you know what? The only thing stopping you from dealing with your fear, from moving forward, is you. The only thing stopping you, and, 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 and I know a lot of us live in a scarcity mindset, money is not stopping you. Having, not having family support is not stopping you, okay? When you think about it, I mean, our father is the king of the universe, okay? And everything that is in this world is his, and so he has unlimited resources. All right, so look at this. In Ephesians 1, 29 through 20, says, I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe in him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Okay? So as Christians, we have the power that raised Jesus from the dead living in our life. I mean, you talk about resources, okay? God's unlimited resources. But where's our faith? Where's our trust in God that he's really going to make things move in our life? Okay, he's not going to force us to change. He's not going to force us to deal with our fears. We have the word. We have the scriptures and all the promises that are. We have to be the ones that say, I am not going to let this keep me from moving forward. Okay, so truth. Okay, we are fearing the wrong things. We are fearing the wrong things. We're, we, we don't need to be afraid of our spouse. We need to be more afraid of God and us not doing what we need to do. Um, we need to, be, need to be afraid of staying in that insanity loop and doing the same thing over and over and again, expecting different results, okay? We need to be afraid of nothing changing in our life, of literally sitting in that same place and getting worse and worse and worse and compromising what we know is right, getting so confused we can't even see the truth anymore. And I've talked to women like that, and it breaks my heart that just... They stay in a relationship where their spouse is out, you know, having affairs and then comes home and expects them to have sex with them. And they give in because they think that's their duty as a wife. That's, that's compromising. That's compromising the truth. You are a daughter of the king of the universe. Okay. You're putting your own health at risk. Okay. You compromise your convictions when you give into fear and not trust in the promises of God's word. We also need to be more afraid of the future of our children. What kind of an example are we setting to our kids when we compromise God's word, when we compromise the truth, when we, when we, our, our children see us uh, not setting boundaries with our spouse? You know what's going to happen? They're going to do the same thing in the relationships in the future. Your sons are going to be just like their dad. Your daughters are going to be just like you. If you do not make these changes, if you do not get past these fears, okay? And I think one of the scariest things that if we do not face this fear is that we literally face the loss of our salvation if we don't stop making our spouse an idol. It says in Revelation 21.8, he equates sexual immorality, he equates lying and cowardice with idolatry. So it is desperate. You, we're in a desperate situation if we are letting fear keep us from healing. Now there was a... Um, 
a, a prophet in the Old Testament, okay, Gideon, you've probably heard of him. He's the one who laid the fleece before God, you know, because he was scared of going up against this army. It says the the Assyrian, it was the Assyrians and the Midianites. It's in um in Judges chapter six through eight. It says there were so many of them, they were like they were thick as locusts. Like they couldn't even count them. That's how many there were. And the Israelites only had thirty two thousand men. But you know what God said? He's like, you know what? You have too many people to go up against them. I'm gonna get the glory for this. God talking about himself. He's like, you know what? I'm gonna cut your numbers back. So okay, anybody's afraid, you guys just go back home. Okay. So twenty two thousand left. So that leaves Gideon with an army of ten thousand men. And it was God's like, mm, that's still too many. So they brought him to a river and they all knelt down and they got something to drink. And God said, Okay, I only want you to take the guys who got down and lap the water like a dog. You know how many that left them with? Three hundred men against an army that was as thick as locusts. But you know what? They won because God was in control of the whole thing. So Gideon did not let his fear stop him from doing what God called him to do, and neither can we, okay? See, courage can't exist without fear. Courage cannot exist without fear. And you know what? It's only when we are uncomfortable that we're really able to grow. I'm gonna put that down here too. I think that's a powerful script, powerful, powerful thought, okay? Courage can't exist without fear. So you know what? If you're afraid, that's awesome because you have the opportunity now to be courageous. And it's only when we are uncomfortable that we can really grow. It's only when we are uncomfortable that we can really grow. Um, and then I'm, I have one more quote from you. I want you to think about this because we're talking also about the, the scriptures talk about how we need to fear God. Okay, so fearing and loving God, there's a there's a balance of what that really entails. So fear and love are the inseparable inseparable elements of a relationship with God. Fear preserves love from degenerating into presumptuous familiarity, and love prevents fear from becoming a servile and cringing dread. See, there needs to be a fear of God and doing what He calls us to do, but there, it, it balances, it meshes with love, and it's this perfect combination that God created for us to have a relationship with Him. I'm going to post a few um, uh, graphics after the the video is done, so you guys can see this. But I love this concept of really turning fear in its head. I, I remember seeing this. It said fear, and it breaks the acronym F E A R. Okay, fear is the fierce execution of adventurous and relentless living. I love that, okay? Turning fear on its head. We're not gonna let it stop us, okay? So now, there are three ingredients. This is what I found. There are three ingredients to getting past our fear and moving toward healing and recovery, okay? Those three, three ingredients are a strategic plan, okay? If you're stumbling around in the dark not knowing where you're going, you're not gonna get anywhere. You're lost in the woods, okay? So you need a plan, you need a map, okay? But you also need a guide, okay? I have those two ingredients. That's why I started this ministry, okay? I have those two ingredients. But you know what? You have to bring the third one, okay? And that's a tenacity. That's a faith. That's a determination to push past any obstacle that's gonna hold you where you are at. It's a willingness to face down your fears. Remember Gideon, okay? Cut back from 32,000 to 300. That's scary, but you know what? God comes through every time. So if you are ready to work through your fears, if you're ready to push past it and get to the other side, okay? Other side where I'm standing here saying, come, 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 okay? If you're ready to push past the fear, I want you to schedule a call with me today. We call it a breakthrough call. It takes about 45 minutes, all right? You're gonna get truth and you're gonna get clarity, all right? It's hopeforspouses.com slash apply. Again, hopeforspouses.com slash apply if you're really ready to deal with that fear. Okay, so this is Kim Pullen, Hope for Spouses Lunchtime Live. I will see you next week.